clock tower is the result of a game style exploration from the game development school Human. Well, they did have their own label as well. However, many of their games were developed by students of the school. Clock Tower is just one such experiment that went on to become a cult classic. Released in 1995 for the Super Famicom, Clock Tower has you taken the role of an orphan named Jennifer Simpson, who is in fact based upon a character named Jennifer from the Italian horror movie Phenomena, who in turn was played by Jennifer Connolly. Yes, the girl from Labyrinth, or maybe for you younger people, the bad woman from Battle Angel Alita. Anyway, you and your fellow orphans move to a new place of residence, for some reason. The game starts as each character talks about how creepy the place is. Then you go in search of your teacher, who has gone to fetch someone. While you are away, you hear screams. Rushing back to the main hallway, you find all of your friends are missing. What has happened to them? That's for you to find out. The main aim of the game is to find your friends while avoiding the scissor man. This evil munchkin type fiend walks around the home with a massive pair of shears, waiting to slice his next victim. You must avoid this madman by solving clues in a point and click fashion. The game may seem a little dull watching this video, but it is quite intense while playing. You never know just where the scissor man will strike, but when he does, You'd better have a way to escape, otherwise, you'll meet your end. In 1997, Clock Tower was brought over to the PlayStation under the name of Clock Tower The First Fear. Just like the Super Famicom game, it was never released outside of Japan. In fact, no version of Clock Tower was released outside of Japan, but there are fan translations, as you could see from the Super Famicom footage. This release features a new danger weapon, a new room, minor scenario additions, as well as added FMV scenes. The behaviour of Scissorman is also slightly altered, to make him more of a threat than he was in the Super Famicom original. Jennifer herself is also slightly more agile, although this can become annoying at times as she runs past what you want her to interact with. As you can see, the graphics are very close to the original game, but have been touched up here and there. I do find a few scenes to be a little too dark mind you. Still, even with this slight annoyance, Clock Tower on the PlayStation is pretty solid.
The next port came to Windows 95, again like the PlayStation original in 1997. This is very much like the PlayStation version, but with some improvements. The game now runs at a higher resolution, which gives everything a much cleaner look. The overly dark areas on the PlayStation version have been fixed as well as a few other little minor tweaks here and there. We even get a brand new intro and some MIDI tunes. So far the platform of choice for playing Clock Tower is on Windows. Looks better and controls better thanks to the mouse controls. But this is not the last port, oh no, one more came out in 1999. And here is the final port of Clock Tower running on the Wonder Swan, and man, is it a bit of a disappointment. The Wonder Swan is a pretty powerful gaming device that runs off one AA battery for hours upon end. It should have been able to handle Clock Tower with ease, however, the team who ported this version clearly had no clue what they were doing, as the game is awfully slow. So slow in fact, that I was falling asleep playing it for this review. This is such a shame because the core gameplay is here. It looks and sounds pretty good too, but man, is it just too slowly paced to be entertaining. And let's take a look at all those versions of Clock Tower running side by side.
Bye-bye.